when you're starting the lemon painting. You could start theoretically on the tablecloth, so that blue cloth, or you could start on the lemons. There's no right or wrong place necessarily when you're starting a painting. There are some good practice things to keep in mind, like use short strokes and paint thin at first. So that first layer is with thin paint, not thick, and then build as you develop your painting. And that's the way I like to teach is with building in terms of layer that you don't necessarily paint really thick at first. You start lean with your paint. And I'm deciding to go to the main focal area, which is that lemon in the middle. And I'm working on the form shadow. So I'm going to form shadows and cast shadows first. And I'm trying to wrap my stroke around that lemon. Now, if I do happen to have a hue, like on that, that lemon, that shadow side, that I see on another lemon, I will go to that other lemon and put that color down because that saves me time later on. I don't have to remix that color. I already have it on my palette or on my brush and I can just apply it to another spot. Now, it is really tricky to get the shadow side of a lemon and that's because you're looking at yellow in shadow and that's hard to figure out like, how do I make yellow darker? And it, it's a little bit tricky. It has to do with adding the primary colors to your yellow and to kind of get like a brown. I did use yellow ochre a lot in there. So I used yellow ochre and blue and a hint of red. Now I want to take a moment to show you how my eyes are looking at the reference because sometimes my eyes are in focus, but at other times if I'm trying to determine where to put the darks, the midtones, the lights, or if I'm trying to color match, I will intentionally get my eyes out of focus. And how you do that is through a method called squinting. I also have one eye that is naturally out of focus, so I'll shut the good eye and look out of my fuzzier eye. Um, it's a technique that a lot of artists employ. So here's what I'm seeing in focus and then slightly out of focus. It helps me to articulate the differences between the values. How dark is it? How light is it? Is it a midtone? Is it a highlight? So it helps me to see a little bit better. And then I go back to my painting and I translate that. When you're painting the lemon, um, it's really important that you curve your stroke around the form. So this should sound familiar. It's what you did on the apple. I'm using really short strokes at first because I use short strokes if I'm trying to transition from one color to another. In other words, like kind of blending or getting a gradient. And the thing about putting layers on is I don't have to be perfect my first layer. I think that's what I like about doing this process is that um, it doesn't have to be perfect the first layer. Also with certain colors like yellow, um, it's very transparent. So yellow and some crimsons and some blues can be super transparent. So you'd want to put a second or third coat on top of that, that paint to make it look more opaque because that is something that we're aiming for is kind of an opaque look on these forms, so on these fruits. And I really do advocate either going to the midtones or form shadows first. Remember a form shadow slowly, gradually turns into the local value, which is the yellow. So it's a blended transition. It's not all of a sudden shadow side, light side. It's a slow easing into light or into dark. I've used a lot of dull colors on the shadow side. So now I want to bring up the intensity and the saturation. So I'm using pure yellow, but maybe like a dot of yellow ochre in there as well. And I'm going to slowly work my way into the highlight. You notice that I don't paint over where the highlight's going to go and then paint it on top. I always work around my highlight. I think that is a good practice. I'm not saying you can't do it the other way, but this is the way I really recommend. And again, when you're painting the highlight, think of a Van Gogh moon or a Van Gogh sun. You want your strokes to really curve around and to kind of wrap around that highlight, getting tighter and tighter and lighter as it goes towards that center. That center um, highlight is kind of similar to a sun, the way the sun works. At this stage in the painting, the uh, lemon is still looking a little bit splotchy, but that's okay. I'm going to move on. Remember, I'm not going to be overly concerned if it's not perfect. 
and it's also looking a little bit too round. So look, Lamb makes mistakes too. So I can adjust that um, when I go back in and paint with a second coat of paint. So I'm going in and I'm gonna work a little bit on the foreground, which is the cloth. And I like to go right to the cast shadows. I think that's good practice to try and articulate those cast shadows. I always feel like a form looks like it's floating. It doesn't look like it's solid or 3D until you have the cast shadow there too, if it's sitting on a surface. Remember about the cast shadow, that it needs to go from dark to mid-tone to light. So it, it ever so slightly starts out kind of dark, nearest the object, and then it pales out as it goes down typically. And I put in other colors in that blue, so it's not just blue and white. I put blue, white, magenta, blue, white, and a little bit of yellow to it. So you want to vary your colors up. If you use only one color, like if you put a background and it's all gray, that's going to look really flat. That's why I really suggest that you put flickers of other colors in there. It'll make your work more exciting and more alive and more interesting to your viewer. So I'm working on other areas of shadow too. So there's some darker uh, shapes back there, but you always want to compare one value to another. Like I have to compare that cloth that's back there to the cast shadow from the lemon on the right. And one thing as you're painting these shadows, it's good to try and get a soft edge. So I'm using kind of a dry brush on that edge to kind of rough up the edge so it's not like super sharp, not too crisp just a little bit rough edged. You'll see me do that um, in, later on in this video. Because you're still working on the apple, I don't wanna give you too much, so I'm just going to show you a little bit of the cast shadows, and then on Tuesday when we return, you can work on the lemon and do more of the foreground too. So the goal is, you guys, that we get two coats of paint on each of these fruit drawings. So it should take between two and three days to complete each one. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to look at my image in black and white and compare it to the reference photo in black and white and check my values. That's not a bad practice for you to try and do too.